Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Notion Alliance webinar. This is the first of a series of webinars we're planning on providing over this year um, to tell our members, our partners, and our potential new partners uh, some of the opportunities we see um, within our ecosystem and how we can support you all to create new business opportunities. My name is Graham Martin. I'm chairman and CEO of the Inocean Alliance, uh, and I founded the Inocean Alliance in 2008. Today, I'd like to take you through a few slides showing some opportunities and benefits we see using Inocean technology and in our Inocean ecosystem. And today, I'd like to focus a little bit more on what we call smart spaces. And I'll go into some examples and some projects and some opportunities here. And finally, uh, I'd like to show you then a little bit about the Notion Alliance, who we are, what we do, and how we can support our members in networking, technical cooperation, and marketing cooperation. And at the end, um, we will hopefully have some time to take some of your questions and answers. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and we will be sending uh, the participants a link to this. Um, all of the participants are muted through the, throughout the webinar, but please feel free in the, the questions to uh, put any questions you may have. Uh, as I say, we will have time to take a few questions at the end. If not, we will answer each individual question afterwards. So, First of all, the high-level opportunity. What is this all about? Um, it's all about sensors and switches. And in Ocean, it's all about energy harvesting-based sensors and switches. So sensors and switches that require no wire to power them and no battery to power them. And if you see here, we are moving from billions of sensors today to trillions of sensors in 2032. Now, if you think about that, even in a, a smart home, we will have 200 or more sensors and switches. And in a smart commercial building, 20,000, 50,000, even 100,000 sensors and switches. And of course, it will not be possible to pull a cable to all of these. We just don't have enough copper, enough time, enough energy to do all of this and we don't have enough batteries and we don't have enough people to change these batteries so a certain part of this huge market will be energy harvesting based sensors and switches and this is our core market what else is giving us a huge tailwind here is that the whole world is now talking about energy reduction and CO2 reduction. Most large companies already have a sustainability program moving towards carbon neutral, and most countries or even continents have programs moving to carbon neutral, some by 2040, some by 2050. Um, but the bottom line is, buildings use approximately 40% of our energy. If we are going to make these goals, we need to make our buildings energy efficient. And this is where we come in, um, helping buildings to become energy efficient, lower CO2 output, as well as being healthier, more comfortable, safer, secure. The COVID pandemic has also shown us that we put a little bit more focus now on health and wellness. And I'll show you some examples during this webinar showing that how this has changed the way we work, how we are beginning to share spaces, share desks, but at the same time, make these spaces healthier and more comfortable for our employees. So th these are all huge opportunities for the Inocean um, technology. Of course, 
most governments and most companies are moving towards CO2 neutrality and there are many many programs across the globe uh, that are either um, incentives or are actually laws to make this happen. We have for example in Europe the European Green Deal which basically means about one-third of the European community budget over the next eight years will be in reducing CO2, helping us to make climate neutral. In USA, for example, they are targeting to, to make 50 to 52% reduction in CO2 between 2005 and 2030 and go to CO2 neutral by 2050. As I said, many companies have these goals as well. Our promoter member, Microsoft, wants to go CO2 neutral by 2030, for example. So in smart buildings, we will need sensors, we will need switches to help uh, reduce energy consumption and to help reduce these CO2. Um, in North America, for example, there are also many programs or laws. For example, in California, we have million LED challenge being promoted. Uh, but also in New York City, where as you see here, almost 70% of greenhouse gas emissions are from buildings. So New York City has created the local law 97, which basically means that if you haven't made your building energy efficient by 2025, uh, you may have to start paying fines. And by 2030, uh, you may have to pay fines up to one and a half million dollars per year. So this is a very big incentive uh, to retrofit your existing building to meet these climate goals. So we have a huge tailwind in making our existing buildings smart. And also uh, our focus today is smart spaces not just making the buildings smart, but optimizing them and making them healthier. By collecting data from the sensors or the switches and using that data um, to optimize the building. And we'll show you some examples of this um, throughout the webinar. In a later webinar, we will focus on smart buildings and on our other key pillar, um, smart homes. Um, smart homes is also a very big market for in ocean technology. Um, as I said, um, modern smart homes can have over 200 switches or sensors. And having batteryless and wireless is a huge advantage, flexibility, comfort, energy efficient, etc. So we're seeing a huge growth in smart home as well. Um, and also in specific parts of this market, for example, ambient assisted living we are seeing large growth here as our population ages and it becomes more expensive to pay for carers. So using technology to do this is becoming a must. Uh, now, just summarizing the benefits for, for the users. Um, now, using the InOcean technology, which is batteryless and wireless switches and sensors, um, that saves up to 30% installation costs um, in new builds because you're not paying an expensive installer as much to pull cables, uh, make holes in walls, redecorate, etc. And in retrofit scenario in an existing building, that can actually be up to 80% because you're not having to go and disrupt the operation of the building and make all this noise and mess. You simply go in and you can stick the sensors or switches um, wherever you want. You can hook it up and you're ready to go. As I said, health and wellness is becoming a very key um, item. Um, we want our air quality to be good, our light levels, temperature, humidity. And there are many studies that show if you are in an ideal environment that your employees are actually up to 15% more productive and 15% less absent from, from their place of work. So this is also huge. If you calculate that, how much this could 
benefit a company, but also motivate the employees. So again, this is becoming more and more popular, especially um, with people having gone through the, the COVID pandemic. Space optimization is a very big one. I'll show you a few examples in, in, in a minute. Um, but even before the corona pandemic, somewhere between 30 and 40% of desks in many offices were simply unused at any one point of time. And now as many people have got used to working at home, uh, we think there will be a hybrid working model will become very popular where you may work two to three days in the office a week and two to three days at home, which means we will need less desks, less conference rooms, etc. And by measuring this and by optimizing this, it will be possible to save 25 to 40% space. And of course, less running costs and less cost of these space. And if you're in an office block in a big city, that's a huge cost. And of course, in addition to saving the space and to saving the energy and cleaning and running costs of that space, if you install building automation, you can also save 30% energy and CO2. And using an ocean um, is maintenance free for decades. It helps sustainability. It helps the carbon footprint of the building. So today I just wanted to spend five or 10 minutes just showing you um, the opportunities in this new market we call smart spaces, where we are collecting data from an existing building and using that data to optimize the space. And over the past four or five years, we've been doing proof of concepts and working with key partners such as Microsoft, Aruba, IBM, T-Systems, etc. cetera. Um, and here are four key application areas um, that have crystallized. Office occupancy, as I said, do we need much as much space? Do we need as many desks? Do we need as many conference rooms? Air quality and environment, energy monitoring and control, and people counting. Are there too many people in one area? Uh, do we have social distancing, etc.? The big challenge in all of this is how do you get this data? If you have an existing building with 10,000 desks and conference and everything, how do we get the data out of this? And this is a huge advantage of the Inocean technology. You can go into a building and just stick sensors and switches on desks, on chairs, on walls, on glass, wherever you want. And you can then hook it up either to your uh, building automation system or in the meantime, um, also to your existing uh, Wi-Fi network. Um, we have a partner partnership with Aruba, and this makes it possible if you have a building with a certain Aruba network, you can basically go in, add a USB receiver to your existing Wi-Fi network, stick your sensors and switches wherever you want, and immediately, you're collecting this valuable data to be able to take all of these decisions we were talking about to optimize space utilization, optimize air quality, optimize energy use, etc. It's that simple. You do not have to open a wall, pull a cable anywhere. You can go into building and during normal operation, you can put the system in um, and start saving costs, saving energy, um, and helping to make your employees healthier and more productive. Um, so we've, we've done hundreds of projects in the meantime. I just wanted to show you one or two in the few minutes we have. Uh, this is an example of um, one office where they have 1,900 employees, but only 1,400 desks, because they figured out that no time is more, are more than 1,400 people um, on site. Um, so this saves a certain amount of space, saves a certain amount of cost, and of course it gives them the opportunity to make the space a little bit um, more comfortable, um, and they have 
individual temperature controls in, in each area. So again, helping the um, comfort, helping the, helping the productivity. Another one here, this is an IBM project. Um, again, checking occupancy of desks, chairs, conference rooms, canteens, restrooms, etc. Um, and then also matching that with energy usage, temperature, etc. And then making the decisions to optimize the building based on this valuable data. Um, or many facility manager companies here, this is one Apleona, um, are adopting the technology and offering this to their clients to measure all of this, to collect all of this data, and then together with the client to optimize this, saving cost, saving space, improving air quality, improving productivity, health and wellness. So that was some of the smart buildings, smart homes, and some of the new smart spaces um, applications and opportunities that we see within the Innocent Alliance. In the last few minutes, I'd like to give you uh, an overview of the Innocent Alliance. Um, the Innocent Alliance is an open, non-profit standardization organization um, formed in 2008. Uh, we have over 400 member companies, mainly from the building and IT branch and we have created an international open standard for sensor switches systems for smart homes smart buildings and smart spaces um, the key activities in the alliance first of all we have created the technical specifications so anyone creating a new product can uh, get to market faster, he can be interoperable with existing products. Um, it's an open worldwide standard um, with true multi-vendor interoperability. This is very important also moving forward. Networking is a very key thing within our alliance. We bring companies together to help them uh, do projects together. Um, we promote um, the various products of our members on our website, we publish things. So we're bringing people together and informing people of what's going on and helping them find the right partners for their projects. And a big part of our alliance is also um, marketing and education. Um, we're helping to tell people about the opportunities, um, about how we can meet the goals, and we are creating a many training materials, information, videos, etc., to help our members um, learn and also uh, teach their partners about this. One example of this is uh, our Aruba Partner Program. Um, I think about 50 of our member companies are now part of the Aruba Partner Program. And this is a very fast growing ecosystem um, together with the Aruba Wi-Fi networks and the Inocean sensors, we're helping these partners and their customers create smart spaces um, and create um, better buildings. And this is a, a very good partnership um, and uh, we're very, very happy to offer our members this uh, and work very closely with Aruba, uh, with Mike Tenefos and his team on doing this. We are also um, part of the um, new standard, uh, which is called MATTER. Some of you may, knew, may have known it last year as CHIP. And this is together with the Connectivity Standards Association, which was formerly known as the Zigbee Alliance. And the idea behind MATTER is to create in true interoperability, multi-vendor interoperability at IP level. And we are a big supporter of this, of open standards interoperability. And the idea here is at IP level, everything is interoperable, independent of the transport layer, whether it's Bluetooth, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's in Ocean, whether it's Zigbee, 
um, the user doesn't really care. He just wants on his app or on his tablet or wherever his control is, it just to be one thing for him. And that's why we are very su uh, supportive of Matter and the Matter standard should be coming out this year. And we are intending being a very good partner here with many of our members. Um, we've also just launched um, this month, actually, um, a new video series um, promoting sustainability, CO2, energy savings. Uh, this was done with our promoter members, Microsoft, T-Systems, InOcean and others. And it uh, will be launched by CBS News on March 28th and also Reuters in April. And here we're just showing um, what key companies are doing um, to get energy efficient, to reach the CO2 goals of companies and countries. Um, and please have a look at these videos. Please uh, use them as inspiration. Um, this is a very good way of showing how an ocean technology can help you to meet these goals. If you're um, a product developer, we have a full set of technical specifications to make it very easy for you to develop new products and to be interoperable with um, the ecosystem. As I say, this is an open international uh, standard. And if you are a member of the Alliance and you have created products, we promote them on our website. And this, this website gets about 100,000 hits per year half of whom are looking for products and solutions. So this is a very good tool um, to help OEMs and promote their products. And it's a very good tool for people looking for solutions uh, to find them. Um, we also create um, a lot of white papers, marketing documentation. Many of the typical questions we get you know, how does an ocean compare with Bluetooth, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, LoRa, Sigfox? What's the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, very good question. So we create materials to help our partners answer these questions. What's wired versus wireless? Um, what's the difference? Where does the 30% savings come from, etc.? So we create a lot of um, materials to help our partners learn this and to teach their customers. And we, we do about 20 to 30 events per year. Um, in last month in Las Vegas, for example, we did the AHR Expo, Expo. There was about 20 of our member companies here helping to, to show the interoperable ecosystem um, in the, the HVAC and building automation world. So we're here to help you. We have a, a team of people um, to support you, um, starting with myself. Um, and we have a number of ambassadors, we have vice chairman, we have technical support, uh, et cetera. So we do um, invite you to become part of this, to work with us to your benefit and to our mutual benefit. And if you have any questions or anything, please have a look at our website or contact us and we'll be happy to support you. I say today we are over 400 members and we are leading in international um, solution providers, smart homes, smart buildings, smart spaces. Uh, we are growing very fast. The ecosystem is growing very fast. And I think as you saw at the moment, at the start of this presentation, we have a huge opportunity in front of us. So thank you very much indeed for taking your time. Um, I'm exactly on time, 25 minutes. That gives us five minutes um, for questions. Um, so please feel free to type in any questions you have. Um, I see that the first question here is, um, what are the membership fees of the InOcean Alliance? Um, so the answer is the standard membership fee for participant is $6,000 per year. There are other membership levels depending on who you are and how um, intensive you want to be part of this. 
our promoters who run the alliance is 35,000 per year. Associates who are just part of this are $500 per year. I see another question here. Um, do you have switches using open thread? Um, I'm not quite sure what that means. I mean, if we're talking about uh, the standard thread, um, yes, we are working together with thread. Um, I don't know if a switch today with energy harvesting using thread, but we are working together with thread to define sleeping devices um, that can be part of these networks. And that's also uh, a discussion we're, we're having with uh, the people at Matter. Um, energy harvesting sleeping devices are obviously special um, and they need to be treated slightly differently. And we have worked with various organizations to make this, this happen. Um, and seeing... Um, one question here, uh, what products are the most popular? Um, well, it, it depends on the market. Um, obviously, in all buildings, uh, light switches very popular within Ocean, no cables, no batteries. Um, if you move to smart spaces, um, the devices that are very popular at the moment are firstly checking for occupancy. So sensors checking for desk occupancy, chair occupancy, room occupancy, restroom occupancy, um, these kind of things, but also air quality. CO2, um, fine particles, um, temperature, humidity. These are the, the key um, products. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, um, one more question, a very good question here. Any um, plans for energy harvesting support for LoRa? One actually. Um, yes, we've already done a, a proof of concept here, um, and uh, there are samples available with energy harvesting LoRa. Um, that's, uh, in, in inverted commas, easy if we're outdoors and there's a lot of sunlight and you, you, you can um, uh, use sunlight to power this. It's a little bit trickier indoors because LoRa is quite a high power protocol. Sometimes the signals are very long. They take not just a few milliseconds, but hundreds of milliseconds or even seconds. Uh, so the energy budget becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, but outdoors, it's certainly possible today. It's, it has been done. Indoors is a challenge. And uh, that's why I say there's no one wireless standard that suits everything. You need to look at what your requirements are and then you can choose the best um, protocol for that application or product. Uh, we do have a few more questions but uh, we're just out of time. I will answer all of the questions individually. I thank you all very much for taking your valuable time today. I hope this was interesting and if you're interested in about three or four months we plan to have the next one with updates and more information about new opportunities and how the Ocean Alliance can support you there. So I thank you all very much indeed. Have a nice day, have a nice evening, and I hope to see you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.